Thank you for that. Um, our next speaker is a member of the editorial board of the Global Trade and Customs Journal, which is currently based in Washington, D.C., and published by Wolters Fluer. Over the years, the WCO has published a number of articles in this journal, including a, a paper last month by Thomas Conten on mirror analysis. Following invitations from the journal's general editor, Jeffrey Snyder, both the WCO Secretary General and I are members of the journal's editorial board. Today we have with us Mr. John Brew, who is a member of the journal's editorial board and is a partner at the Washington, D.C. law firm Cole and Mooring. It thus uh, gives me great pleasure to introduce John Brew. John? Thank you, and a special thanks goes to the WCO, Azerbaijan Customs, and Korean Customs for making this excellent conference possible and providing the journal the opportunity uh, to speak. Uh, a common theme that I see in the presentations uh, during this conference is the importance of research and collaboration to achieve two goals, trade facilitation and compliance. The journal provides a forum to publish this research and analysis. I'm going to today provide a brief description of the journal, uh, and then I'd like to focus on and give examples of articles, recent articles in the journal, that show how public-private collaboration uh, can increase trade facilitation and compliance. So this is just the general background about the, the Global Trade and Customs Journal. Um, the focus of our journal is to provide practical insights on issues facing international business. And as you can imagine, the, there's a broad scope of issues. And, and really at its core, and has been echoed here uh, throughout the presentations, that customs is a multidisciplinary practice. Um, so we will examine typical customs issues or more common customs issues, such as classification and the harmonized system, valuation, origin, enforcement, but we also get into other enforcement issues and, and, and responsibilities of customs administration, including uh, enforcement of export control rules, which prohibit or, or limit sensitive uh, export of sensitive items, or sanctions, which restrict certain exports, WTO and FTA agreements and their implementation, um, unfair trade and trade remedies. These are anti-dumping and countervailing duty actions. It's customs that collects those duties. Uh, Anti-corruption is another issue uh, that, that we, we address. And we address those issues on a national, uh, regional, and global level. And uh, like this conference, we're, uh, we're 10 years old, so um, we're celebrating an anniversary. Um, as far as our board and our authors and our readers, I think the best way to describe them all is, is diverse. Um, we're, we, we, we have authors and editors and readers in dozens of countries, and uh, they're truly global. Um, and and they, they represent different areas in, in the customs world, including law practitioners, government officials, NGOs, corporations, and academia, university and scholars. You know, right now there's, there is a concentration in the EU and the US of both authors and readers. Uh, but our intent is to expand that to, to other jurisdictions. So this is the type of content we're looking for uh, and looking for your contributions. The most common is an article, um, and, uh, and those have been referenced here, and, and I'll address some of those types uh, later on. We also have com commentaries that just look at laws and, po and policies uh, implemented by different countries or regions or, or the WTO. Um, and provide gen general comments on it. Research reports, book reviews, interviews. Uh, we also have special issues which will do regional focus, for example, trade issues in Southeast Asia or China as a non-market economy as treated by different countries around the world. Um, one, one other form of uh, content that's not on here is a case note, and those are legal descriptions or summaries of, of recent and, and precedent-setting cases in, in different jurisdictions. 
Uh, also, I would note that our, our publication is monthly. The goal of our, our publication is right now is to increase corporate, firm, and global readership and to increase government, NGA, and, and global authorship. Um, we want to drive global trade innov innovation, facilitation, and compliance. And one of the ways that we can do that, which I'll get into further in a bit, is through greater uh, private-public private dialogue and, and, and cooperation. So public-private uh, collaboration. Perception is not reality. I think there's a misplaced belief that global businesses and customs administrations are true adversaries. Um, and, and I think that's overstated. So in this photograph, uh, customs administration would be the cat and the global businesses would be the mouse. But I think more often than not, global businesses and customs administrations have more in common and common goals and, and problems. And while it's not a perfect marriage, there'll be, there'll be adversarial and there'll be arguments. Um, I, I would like to focus on these shared goals and problems. So here's, here's my list. And, and, and so both customs and, and global businesses don't like illicit trade. It harms global businesses and they lose billions of dollars a year. And it, it makes customs job more difficult and, and it, it doesn't facilitate trade. Um, so, so both customs and, and global businesses want to fight illicit trade. Both customs and global businesses want trade facilitation and capacity building to expand markets and improve economies. Uh, they both also face multidisciplinary enforcement issues and they want harmonization of the rules, um, which, uh, which requires transparency and communication. Um, some of the benefits of collaboration, I think, have been discussed on different panels. Nick from Australian Customs talked about the authorized, uh, uh, authorized importer uh, um, program, authorized operator program, or trusted trader program in Australia. You know, the benefits of those programs, it's, it's a quid, quid pro quo, as he said. The, the, the importers will make themselves compliant and have internal controls before they import. So Customs doesn't have to be, uh, doesn't have to inspect their shipments as much, so customs administrations can focus on the illicit trade or the higher risk trade. And so that, in effect, every, everyone benefits from that because it's a risk-based approach and, and legitimate trade will flow through quickly and, and illicit trade will be more likely stopped. So here's my example of illicit trade. This is one man's attempt to smuggle exotic birds. Um, unsuccessful attempt, uh, and this, uh, this is a CITES violation. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure if it happened in Norway or not, but the, the point is, and some people might not think this is a significant uh, issue, um, fish and wildlife uh, or illicit trade, but smuggling is smuggling. And you see the same patterns that smugglers use in the same methods. So whether it's, whether it's narcotics or whether it's, whether it's c counterfeit goods or, or exotic birds, you're gonna see the same methods and the same problems. And really, aside from illicit trade and the health and safety issues in illicit trade, it's bad for business because businesses, as I mentioned, lose billions of dollars a year in counterfeit goods and illicit trade. And so they, they, they have a common interest with customs to, to stop it. So here are some articles that we have done on illicit trade. And uh, the director of Sri Lankan Customs uh, spoke yesterday on incentives and how incentives can be used to, to fight illicit trade for customs administrations. We've, al we've also had articles on customs enforcement of intellectual property rights in foreign trade zones. And, um, and then Robert just mentioned the article, the mirroring article on customs risk assessment and fraud analysis that Tomas did from the WCO research unit. And that mirroring is, uh, was mentioned on a panel or earlier, uh, uh, earlier this afternoon. Trade facilitation, another common problem. Uh, this is a picture at the U.S.-Mexican uh, customs border. Both customs and global business want this line to be shorter, and they want that line to move faster. And we've published a number of articles on trade facilitation that include global analysis of the recently completed trade facilitation agreement, as well as country-specific analysis, such as trade facilitation in the Indian coffee sector. 
Um, we've also looked at trade facilitation in developing countries, and there was an article written about uh, um, the role of affordable, affordable customs guarantees. And this was an in interesting article um, because the, the principle was that if you require a bond to be posted by an importer, which, which can be attached and, and secure any underpayment of duties or violations of law, that allows the customs administrations to focus on high risk trade at the time of entry and have the comfort of knowing that if they don't catch it at the time of entry, they can go back any time within five or six years to that importer. And if they have um, made a mistake, um, then they will have a bond that covers their underpayment or, or their violations. Um, and so that was, that was an interesting piece. And then on textile clothing in the Southeast, in Southeast Asia, this was more of an economic analysis where it was a study to, um, to look at uh, log logistics performance indicators such as um, logistics cost, time, distance, applied tariffs, um, expense and volume of trade. And what the analysis showed was when you had a high logistics LPI, logistics performance indicator, these costs were high, you were an inefficient um, trading partner, uh, you, the, the amount of trade went down and it compared different South, Southeast Asian countries to, to prove that. Uh, the, f the final uh, uh, commonality that I'll address is harmonization. Um, both, both customs and global business want harmonization and that, that will facilitate trade. Um, these are some of the articles that we've had on harmonization. The customs union without harmonization, uh, without harmonized sanctions, that actually looks at EU, um, different countries imposing different fines for customs violations. And what that leads to is port shopping. And port shopping is bad. It's bad for business, it's bad for customs administration because it shows that the business is willing to be more efficient and to, to spend more to go to another port and, and customs must be missing something if one port is doing one thing and another port is doing another thing. And there were earlier panels and analysis on how those port inefficiencies um, show, sh show a lack of trade facilitation. Um, we've also talked about uh, the treatment of China as a non-market economy. That has to do with anti-dumping and countervailing duties and an assessment of those duties based on China's status as a non-market economy and different and this was an entire volume in the EU and the US and different countries around the world have different standards uh, and different ways of treating China. Um, and then the final harmonization was, was actually near and dear to the WCO's heart. This is litigation of harmonized system classification in the WTO. So there have been a number of, of WTO cases where one country complains that another country is misclassifying a product and they bring that case to the WCO before it's even resolved at the WCO. And so that article explored why is that even done? Um, why isn't it done at the WCO? So in sum, um, I guess what we're looking for at the journal, the, the private sector desires uh, government input. As, as much as I'd like to think my clients like to listen to me, they would much rather hear from customs administrations and government officials than me. And so uh, government input will create transparency and communication and will further this collaboration, this public-private collaboration, and that ultimately will lead to trade facilitation and compliance. And I think you've seen you know, different examples like the Authorized Operator Program, Security Safe Framework, uh, Intellectual Property Cooperation on Enforcement of Intellectual Property Rights. These are all things and, and instances in, and, uh, and, and, and trade facilitation. With that, I'll leave you with um, our the, the, the journal website and a call for submissions. And if you have any questions or anything, I'm around afterwards, please come up and, and ask. Thank you.